Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video. I'm just going to put the sprinkler on to do a little bit of watering because there's quite a few jobs to do today. I want to plant out my row of cosmos. There's also a special variety of cosmos to plant in the flower border along with a brand new hydrangea. There's herbs to plant out, mint in the containers to split and those gladioli I need staking as well. So we have a resident mole on the allotment and for some reason he only likes our sight or so it seems and every time we come up here there's new mole hills everywhere and of course it wasn't that much of a problem at the start of the year but now that we've started planting things out it's becoming a little bit of a pain and I'm not quite sure what to do about the mole situation so any help that you can offer <laughs> any advice would be much appreciated um, but for now I'm just going to plant out my cosmos I'm going to have a row here now we did actually plant the kale out here um, but we, we decided to move it over next to the winter cabbage and the red cabbage so it would be a lot easier for us to net otherwise we'd have to make two separate cages and it just didn't obviously it made more sense to put the kale over there so the cosmos is going here, I've got two varieties and I've grown these varieties before and I like them because of their height. So the first variety is Dazzler which is a very bright pink that can grow up to about 1.2 metres and then the other variety is Fizzy Rose Picote which again is a pink variety, it's a little bit softer and the edges are darker which are absolutely stunning and that grows to about one meter in height. So what I'm gonna do is maybe just do half row the fizzy rows and then the back half I'll do the dazzler. I have pinched these out. So once they got about two leaves, I pinched the growing tip out. That will just help to produce a bushier plant and obviously you'll get more flowers. Um, it's the first time I've tried pinching out with my flowers. I should have done it sooner. Um, but yeah, I'm quite excited to see how these go. So I'm going to plant them about a foot apart. I plant most of my flowers about a foot apart um, just to give them a little bit of space. Obviously, they're going to grow a little bit bushy. Um, and yeah, they might need staking as well, but I'll probably stake these if they need staking in the same way that I'm going to do with the gladioli. Right, let's put the fizzy rose in. I've actually forgotten my trowel. Let's go and get that. <laughs> Gonna need that. So these variety of cosmos are actually annuals and I have a very special variety which I'm going to be planting over in the flower bed. I went to a garden centre at the weekend and I saw this I just couldn't resist it. Definitely not kale anymore. So this is my little flower border. Um, and it was actually an area which I wasn't going to work on until later in the year. I thought it would be best to focus on the two main vegetable beds, get them growing. Once they start to die back near the end of the year, I could focus on this area and the wildlife area. However, I dug the little border, which obviously didn't take me very long. And because I had flowers over on my old plot that needed to be moved over, I put them here and I'm actually quite happy with them so they'll probably stay here forever um, but there's just a few perennials here so there's feverfew, there's a at the back, there's, there's some ladies mantle, 
There's my birthday rose, which was a David Austin buttercup. And then there's just some foxgloves and some hollyhocks here. Um, yeah, like I said, they're perennial, so I'm hoping this area will just be completely full all the time. I won't need to worry about it too much. What we're going to do is we're going to have a table and some chairs here so we can sit and relax and just enjoy the allotment because I think that's equally as important as growing the vegetables. You need to find time to sit back and actually enjoy all your work. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's going to be a nice little seating area. But obviously there's a few spaces left to fill and when I went to the garden centre a couple of days ago I treated myself to two new flowers. I actually went to the garden centre for a courgette and some purple sprouting seedlings. I didn't get the courgette, I did get the purple sprouting seedlings and a few other things. <laughs> so the first thing is this cosmos which is a half hardy perennial and it's quite special because it's called Chocker Mocker. <laughs> and I've seen these at some of the garden shows that we sold at over the past couple of years. Um, and I've always wanted one, but I want one more this year because my nephew said that one of the things he wanted to grow was chocolate. Um, and unfortunately you can't grow chocolate here. So I think a chocolate smelling flower will be the next best thing. Um, and there's no blooms out on here, but um, they smell delicious. You can't eat them, but they just, they smell so strong of chocolate. It's absolutely amazing. Now this will grow to about 45 centimeter spread. So not too high. I think I'm gonna put it here in front of the row of foxgloves and hollyhocks, which I hoping will always be here to create a nice sort of backdrop. So yeah, I'm gonna put that there can't wait for it to bloom and I can't wait for my nephew to smell the flowers. It's going to be amazing. So that's one of the things I treated myself to. The other thing is this. I've wanted a hydrangea for a couple of years now, ever since I picked some blooms from my boyfriend's mother's um, hydrangea in her garden. They were just stunning. Um, but I've always thought hydrangeas were a little bit old fashioned. Um, but no, I'm absolutely in love. And what's even better about this one is that it was originally $24.99, but I got it for £10. Um, and I think I know the reason why it was reduced, and it's a silly reason. Um, I've got a bit of string around there now, but if you take that bit of string off, it will just flop. I find it so funny how people won't buy something because of the way that it looks in the garden centre. But I mean, with a little bit of support and with some growth, it will be absolutely fine. And I mean, it was more than half price, so um, I'm not complaining at all. This variety is called Marina um, and it grows to about one metre by one metre. I'm going to put it at the back here so it's growing behind the rose bush behind the fever view but it will hopefully create a nice little bush there which i can pick the blooms from to dry for decorations over the winter now the thing with the hydrangeas is they are color changing depending on the ph level of your soil i'm not too worried about what color they are um, i can't remember the ph level of our soil and i've got a test in the cabinet so I might do that later just to see what colour it is going to go but I know that if the pH is acidic um, the flowers will be blue and if it's alkaline they will be pink and obviously if you want the purple the in-between colour um, you want a pH between 5.5 and 6.5. Um, it's all very technical stuff, but like I said, I'm not too worried about what colour it's going to be. I'll be happy if it's pink or blue or purple. It would be nice if it stayed this colour, but um, I'm not going to mess around with the pH level of my soil. I'll just be happy with whatever it is. But yeah, I'm going to put it at the back there. And I have bought up, if I can find them... Some of the supports that we make these have actually been some of the best sellers on the website for the past couple of weeks 
I have been wrapping these non-stop um, but yeah I'm going to put a couple of the supports in probably like that to create a nice circle just to keep it nice and upright but I think that hydrangea is going to totally transform this border A few of the other things that I moved over from my old plot are these containers and yet again they didn't really have anywhere to go so I just plonked them on my dad's bit of patio. Um, but I actually really like the way that it's looking we've created like a little container patch on the patio and he really likes it as well so I think they are here to stay but what we might do is we might change a few of the containers um, and we might change a few things which are planted in them. So this one here has got some lemon balm, which got hit by the frosts a few weeks ago now. So it's looking a little bit sad. Um, there's also a layer of daffodil bulbs in there, Thalia daffodil bulbs, which are stunning. And there's also a rogue sweet pea just growing in the center, which I've just left because it looks far too pretty. Then in this one, there's some gypsophila, which again, I've always grown. It's like a big, white cloud when it blooms it's beautiful um, in this one there's an anemone which is called white swan and it's white on the inside of the petals and then underneath it's purple it's so so beautiful and we actually had fights over that at a garden show um, because we bought it to display on our stand um, and everybody kept asking if it was for sale but i was like no i'm taking it home i'm putting it on the allotment um, but that's not going to stay there, that's going to be moved over to the wildlife area once that's been created. The chimney pot doesn't have anything in it. <laughs> and then in these two containers there is some mint. This one is strawberry mint, there's quite a few weeds in there. <laughs> and this one is spearmint. Um, we really really love mint in this family and we love it with our potatoes so i'm very much looking forward to harvesting those potatoes and having some nice fresh mint to put on them but i also want to try to make some mint tea this year which i'm really excited about the thing with mint is that it is very invasive you can plant it out into the bare ground but it will take over very quickly and very easily I've had some people plant it into like a bottomless bucket and then plant that out into the soil. Um, but I just like to plant it in containers. It obviously contains it. And it also means that you can put it outside your back door or outside your shed and just pop out, pick some mint and you've got it straight away. There are holes drilled into the bottom of these containers to obviously let the water drain out. These are about three years old now. And as you can see, they don't look too healthy at all. Um, they are very congested in there. The roots are very squashed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give them a new lease of life. I'm gonna take them out of their containers. I'm gonna split them up just using a spade. I will probably take the centers out and use the growth on the outside. I'll replant a nice chunk back into the container with some nice fresh compost and yeah hopefully it will reinvigorate the poor mint because it's been very neglected and another thing to remember with mint and with most herbs in fact is that you just need to keep picking them 
the more you pick, the more fresh growth will appear. Um, and obviously the more leaves you will get from your herbs. So yeah, I need to take these out first, split them up, take a few of the weeds out, and then repot them up. I'm really excited to have my fresh mint with my potatoes this year. But these aren't the only herbs growing on the plot. There's a few herbs planted around the circular path and I have a few new additions to add to them. Around our little circular pathway here in the centre of the main path, I've got herbs that side. So I've got rosemary, sage and a thyme and then there's going to be the rhubarb there. So on this side, I'm also going to do exactly the same but this time I'm going to have the rhubarb here and then some herbs this side. So it's going to be a nice little sort of herb garden around the centre island here. I didn't want to have another rosemary or another sage because they're growing really well over there and they're quite big. So what I did do is I treated myself to a lemon verbena, which again, I want to use for making herbal teas with. And it's just, who doesn't love lemon? It smells amazing. And then the other two herbs, which I'm gonna put around here for now, are two more times. Now you're probably wondering why I need that many time on the allotment. We don't actually use that much time in the kitchen. We mainly use it for roast dinners and things like that. But my main reason for growing it here on the allotment is because last year I made a spray using time to treat the white fly on my brassicas because I always get really really bad white fly especially on the kale and even though they don't cause that much trouble they are a pain when it comes to eating it and washing them off all the eggs are on the underneath and yeah, it's just a complete pain anyway i made some um, spray simply by soaking the thyme stalks in a jug of water in exactly the same way you would make the um, fertilizers like the, the um, comfrey fertilizers and the nettle fertilizers just put the stalks in the bottom of a jug cover it with water let it stew there for about two weeks then drain it put it into a spray bottle and spray your brassicas anyway it worked a treat the white fly the white fly last year was hardly there at all so um, i'm going to swear by that spray now and use it every single year which means that I need more time. So I've just got your common thyme and then some lemon thyme. I don't think it matters too much which variety, um, but it will be quite interesting to test the different varieties out. So anyway, I've forgotten my trowel again, <laughs> but like I said, there's gonna be a rhubarb here. It's gonna be one of the rhubarbs which we move over once it's dormant from where the wildlife patch is gonna be. So that's going to grow quite big there. So I think I will probably have the lemon verbena 
here and then the two times here. Now, how big do these grow? They grow up to about 30 centimetres, so it's not overly big. So I'm not sure if I have room for another herb here, but I would really like your feedback on your favourite herbs to grow um, and which ones you think would suit this little kitchen garden. Obviously I've got the rosemary, got the sage, got the thyme, got the lemon verbena, we've got mint over there. Um, I'm not sure which other herb we would overly use, but I would love to know which are your favourite herbs to grow um, and I'll see if I've got room to grow them here. I'm going to go and find my trowel and plant these up and then I'm going to stake my gladioli because as you can see they are starting to grow quite tall. I'm so happy with them. But first let's get these planted up to find that trowel. I'm not sure if you remember me planting these out. I think it was either the end of March or the beginning of April. But anyway, as you can see, they've started to sprout. And I'm so excited to see them bloom later on in the summer. There were a few gaps appearing. So what I did do is I planted a few more bulbs out just to fill in those gaps. They have just started to come through now. Um, but yeah, I, I really cannot wait to see them bloom. But because gladioli can grow from anything from two feet to five feet in height, they need staking. So what I am doing is I'm just putting in these stakes around the edge of my row. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wrap some twine and I'd probably do some different levels, probably two or three levels as they grow. But I will wrap a bit of twine onto this first one and we do exactly the same with our broad beans and then I just wrap the twine around them here making sure all the gladioli are tucked in make sure the twine is nice and tight and what it will do then is it will just create a little bit of a fence, a bit of a barrier. So if we get any strong winds, especially with the gladioli, because they can grow quite tall, the barrier will just keep them in their lines, nice and tidy. And it will hopefully stop any of them flopping over or breaking in the wind, which is not ideal, especially if you want to see them bloom all summer long. So what I'd do is I'd just go up again another level and I'll probably do another level as they grow this side and that side and just wait for them to bloom. But I think that's about it for this video. I've just spotted a few things which have appeared <laughs> since I last was here. I got my first sweet pea on the wigwams and I've also just spotted my first courgette growing. But yeah, it's all coming together really, really nice. I think I might need to do the same sort of structure on my other rows of flowers like the Amimagus back there growing really well it might need supporting in the same way but what I will try and do over the next few days is film a tour for you so I get my dad up here as well and we can just show you around the allotment show you what's been growing we planted 
nearly everything out now so there's lots to show you but I'm just going to finish doing this have my morning cup of tea then go home and do some work so thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time